Okay. Uh, good evening. Today, tonight is the outside of Reb Uh What can be said? Everything that we have from Rabbeinu, from Rabbi Nachman, is from Reb Nossen. And Kuta Alochis is is mamish mepia uh, gvura. It's mamish teiris mepia gvura. So, Baruch Hashem, we zeh for the schus of Reb Nossen today um, to learn his teiris and to say his tefillos and. Amazing, amazing, amazing night tonight. Uh, is that the shame for the whole? We miss Chazik with his chos. Uh, slow a little bit. I'm not going to hold you on for too long. Uh, let's take a quick look. And, um, and here we go. Um, <clears throat> And the day came to pass that there was a mighty warrior. Now, literally mighty. I mean, he was a gibor. On to whom other warriors, literally mighty ones, had gathered. And the warrior and his warriors were going around <clears throat> conquering countries. And he wanted nothing more that they should surrender to him. And when people of the country surrendered themselves to him, he would let them be. And if not, he would destroy them. And thus he went around conquering, not wanting any money, only surrender, that they should submit to him. And the way of the warrior was, he will send his warriors to a country when it was still very far from it, 50 passes, and he, that they should submit themselves to him. And so he would conquer countries. Um, and the merchants of this country of wealth who would go on trading in other countries, return to their country and told them about this warrior, and a great terror fell on him. And even though they were very willing to surrender to him, the thing that prevented them from doing this because he heard that he loathes money. He doesn't want any money at all. And they were, this was opposite, you know, the faith. Therefore, it was impossible for them to surrender to him. Because for them, it would be like uh, apostasy since he didn't believe at all in their faith. That is, in money. And they were very afraid of him. They began to perform devotions and bring sacrifices to their deities. In other words, the people who had a lot of money. Uh, and they would take a beast, that is, someone with little money, was considered by some to be a beast, and bring him as a sacrifice to their gods, to their deities as mentioned in other devotions. And the warrior was continually coming closer to them. And he sent his warriors on ahead to ask them what they wanted, as was his way. And they were terrified, didn't know what to do. And their own, their own merchants gave them advice that they have been to a country where all the residents were gods and traveled with angels. It was a very rich country. It's everyone in that entire country from the smallest to the greatest, they're all extraordinarily wealthy. But the extent that even the smallest of them was a deity by their folly. Because even the smallest was amongst them was ex exceptionally wealthy and possessed the amount of money that was reckoned to make him uh, a deity. And they traveled with angels. I mean, since their horses were covered with such great wealth, probably the horses were very rare, with gold and so forth. The covering of one horse was worth the amount of an angel had. Therefore, 
the writers were traveling with angels, tying three pairs of angels to a carriage and riding with them. Therefore, they needed to send to this country for they would surely be able to help them. They were all they were all deities. That was their merchant's advice. Uh, and the advice satisfied them very much because they believed they would surely would have, they would be saved by them. So they were all deities, as mentioned. And the prayer leader decided to go again to that country. Perhaps he would yet lead them out of their nonsense. And as he went in there, he arrived at the guard and began speaking to one guard as he was accustomed. And the guard told him about this warrior. You know, they were terrified about him. And the prayer leader asked him, what do you want to do? So the guard told him, as mentioned above, they wanted to go to send to the country where they are all deities. And the prayer leader laughed exceedingly at him and said, all oh, this is great foolishness because they are all humans like you. And all of you, including your deities, are all only humans. And there are no deities at all. There is only one Hashem in the world who created everything, and him alone, is fitting to worship. And to him alone is fitting to pray. The only thing is the ultimate purpose in the world. In other words, that the prayer leader spoke to the guards. But the guards would not listen at all because their mistaken belief was already set within them for a long time. But the prayer leader proceeded to speak with him so much till finally the guard answered them, what more can I do? I'm only one individual. They are, you know, they are compared to me, uh, the residents of the country, who are many. And his response was somewhat of a consolation to the prayer leader because he understood that his words had begun to penetrate the guard's ears. Okay, so here we are. Uh, the warrior. The warrior. We notice here that, that first of all, the prayer master comes to them and speaks to them. They don't want to listen at all. They want to hear to anything that he has to say. Then the warrior comes. And now when he goes and he speaks to them, he speaks to, you know, one of the, the small guys outside and he's, he starts to have doubts. And he said, you know, what do you want me to do? You know, I'm just a single person. Uh, you know, you want to go ahead and get City Hall. And the prayer master had a consolation from that. The Indian is that the warrior obviously uh, represents the his gabros of the dinam, of the judgments, all kinds of different kind of forms of judgment. It could be, you know, body aches, health problems, can be family things, can be whatever, any kind of trouble, this way and that. Now, the thing is that there are really two kinds of dinim. There is dinim, what they call dina de, de Kedusha. There's dinim that come from the holy side. And there's a dina de Masava. There's the judgment that come from, from the Tumma. You could say that this is what is meant when they say Ivelas Odom to Salaf Darkon, the foolishness of a man's ways will twist, you know, will twist his way. But Hashem is Aflibo and he's angry at Hashem. If a person is smoking two packs a day, uh, he has very little cause to complain how come he has COPD or any kind of breathing problems. I'm not talking about something worse. 
When a person just takes his credit card and goes to the store and buys and buys and buys and buys and buys, you know, the fact that 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 the bills come in and he finds himself, you know, when things go wrong, because every situation, anybody, everybody has ups and downs. There are good times and bad times. You know, Rabbeinu said to somebody, you know, that uh, there was a Malamed. Rabbeinu told him why, why you should be a Malamed. You know, everybody has, you know, fortunate times and less fortunate times. You know, so if you're going to fortunate times, so what's going to, what's going to be? So somebody, one of the students is going to bring you, you know, the parents are going to give you a tip or they're going to give you some a kugel or whatever it is. But if you go and you and you uh if you take yourself a different kind of, of, of profession, you know, when you have a good time, you know, that means that 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 you can really have you know a lot. But nevertheless, you know, that good times and that bad times. Sometimes you're up, sometimes you're down. When a person goes and 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 he uses his credit card incessantly, because right now everything seems to be okay. Without any cheshbon, the fact that he finds himself, you know, very deep in debt, is not is not is not dina de kedusha. He's not suffering from from dina de kedusha. This is dina de masava. This is just stupidity. Thing is, that there is a dina de kedusha. A dina de kedusha brings a person. To tshuva, and only tshuva works to take off the dinim. Person need to judge himself, and when he judges himself, it takes off the dinim. That's the way it works. Now, what we're noticing here is that until the baltfila came to them, nobody knew anything about about the gibor, about the, the mighty. Because when the dim the kedusha come, this is because the kedusha who cares about you. When the tzaddik enters your life, this is when the dinim come. Because the people who are who are far from 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 the emes, their problems are that they can live their entire lives. Everything is peachy. You know, ups and downs, but everything is okay. There are no dean in there. There's no dean in the Kedusha. They can live their entire lives, you know, when everything is fine. And then comes, you know, after 120 years, comes the last day. And uh, all of a sudden, oops, and uh, big oops. But when the tzaddik starts to come to the person, this is when things start. A dinim de kedusha starts coming, and the dinim de kedusha is they. Nothing helps to take away the dinim, not tzedakah, and not tefillah. They can push it away for a while, but the thing that actually eradicates the judgments, the dinim, is tshuva. Because when a person comes close to a kaddish baruch Hu, the dinim. Comes to come to to wake him up to the point that Hashem is missing from his life, and ninety percent, I would say ninety ninety five percent. I don't know the numbers, you know, uh, of of the problem in the life of a person is because the Kodesh Baruch is not there. You, may, a person may have a headache or may have some problems with the bank, may have problem with this, problem with that. The first thing a person should do is call out to Kodesh Baruch Hu. You bring a Kodesh Baruch Hu into the picture, and ninety percent of the of the problems go away. Ten percent. I mean, you need to do something, but whatever it is, but ninety percent of the problems are because a, a Kodesh Baruch Hu is not in the picture. Bring him to the picture; the great majority of the problems go away. But the question is, what does it mean, tshuva? We see here that the Baal Tfila comes, comes to, to one of the guards and talks to him 
and the guards has a suffix. He has a doubt. When the tzaddik speaks, when the tzaddik comes to a person, first of all, a person lives his life, you know, this world, I'm having a career, I'm doing great, Baruch Hashem, we're making money, we're getting rich, we're getting this, we're getting that. You know, we're going places, we're touring places, whatever it is. But when the tzaddik enters a person's world, doubt coming. What about the Kodesh Baruch You hear that there are gvuras. You hear that there are dinim. The, the, the gibar did, still didn't come close to you. Hashem. But you already know that it exists. The tzaddik comes to you like you're starting to have, you know, these doubts, these, these shyless, yes, no, this way, that way. The that solid, you know, rock solid uh amuna in the the power of this world is gets cracks, gets cracks in it. So you think, you know something, maybe I'll go to that land that everybody is, is rich over there, as we said. That land of everybody is a god over there. That land can be America, which may, you know, we'll make a deal with America, and we'll make a deal with, well, you know, or, or, or doctors or bankers or whatever. All that doesn't work. What actually works is for a person to judge himself and to do tshuva. So with this we come to a very, very important nakuna. What does tshuva mean? What's the kind of tshuva that is required from me? Now, am I supposed to be like a Vekimir Shechter? Am I supposed to be like a Gnosen? Am I supposed to be Alavai? Alavai. But you see that the guard said, and besides that, you know, I'm just a single person. What can I do, you know, against this great majority that thinks differently than me? And the Baltfila had a big nachas from that. What's a big nachas? It's just the guy just said, you know. Maybe you're right, but you know, I, I, you know, I cannot, you know, stop the the, the sea. I cannot start up with city hall. What is the big, what is the big nachas that the tzaddik has from that? The reason is that the secret in avoidance Hashem, and this is a very, very important nakuda. Tshuva does not mean for you to moan and bemoan why you're not better than what you are. Yes, but I'm not this. Yes, but I'm not that. Yeah, but I'm not this. Yes, but I don't daven properly. Yes, but I don't learn properly. Yes, but I don't this. Yes, but I know that. That is the advice of the Yetzirah. What are you talking about? If not, then then what? The secret is for this guard, the source of Rebnosen, does not Hashem Alavai that this world, this word would get into your heart and you should understand. The only thing that you need to be, you don't need to be good. You don't need to be uh, uh, to achieve a certain goal and to eradicate everything that is wrong in your life, whatever it is. All this is right, but it's wrong. The only thing that, that for instance, I need to be is I need to be a, 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 a macho better Aaron Pilchus than I am. That's it. At any given moment in time, we learn to 60, the Rabbeinu says you have to widen your days with Kedusha. We're already seeing, you know, backhoes, 
you know, picking up Kedusha by the by by the ton and dumping it down and and pouring cement by the metric tons and the, no 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 no. If you find yourself that you are wasting ten hours a day on things you shouldn't do, steal ten minutes away from that. Maybe say a little tell it. Be who you are right now, just the way you are, and do a little, a tiny samasu better. That's it. You're good. You're good. You're good. Eh, what are you talking about? I'm good and this. Uh, this is the answer. I'm not good. Oh, you're talking about this. You're calling good. I mean, come on. Says, ah, ah, Chalilah. You're definitely good. Your quest, should you choose to accept it, is to become a little bit better. A little bit better means one word. Lifting up your eyes, please help me to be a little bit better, to learn a little bit more, to do something more. This is the tshuva that eradicates the dinim. How can I be a, 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 an Arab Pinchas that is a, a little bit better? That's it. And a little bit better, as I said before, it's a minute, a few seconds, a capital tillin, a Mishnah, a possum. Yeah, but, you know, we don't. Why not? Because of Rebu Or. The trick of the Yetzahara, the Trabino says in Torah Aleph, the Yetzahara addresses itself in mitzvahs, is that what's the pshat doing tshuva, tshuvas? You're throwing away this world completely. You don't look at this world completely. You don't do any, I mean, you learn, I don't know how many hours, you davening with tremendous kavona. What, what happens if you're davening? And you, can, you don't even know what you said. You don't know what you said. You basically, I mean, you visited these words many times, but you just went, you can't even say the words out loud. So what am I supposed to do? Most people, because of free boy or figure, I might as well just give the whole thing up. I mean, I'm wasting come on, who am I kidding? You know, the big tzaddikim, the big oivdim, they, okay, me. Eh. No, take one pasuk from all the tefillah and try to catch, just to say, what am I saying? What's the meaning of the words I'm saying? That's it. And then take another pasuk, you know, here and there. In the meantime, you went through three quarters of the tefillah. You didn't even realize what are the words that you're saying. But you catch another pasuk. It says, okay, hodu l'ashem, kiru bishmo, hodu v'amim loisov. thank Hashem, Call out his name, announce in the goyim his feet, and then again you become unconscious for the, I don't know, for seventy percent, ninety percent of the tefillah. What's required from you is to say one pasuk, chapa pasuk bekavana. You're who you are. You are the, you are a person who davens the whole tefillah without kavana. Ah, you became better with one pasuk. He became better with one bracha. He, you were able to keep in mind, you were able to say out loud one single bracha. Yay, great, great, great. Only when you are able to get this into you, that you are who you are. Forget about judging you're good, you know, you don't know if you're good or bad anyhow. It's neither here nor there. You're fine. You just need to be, steal another point. Steal another, something good. A word. A machshava. You have one machshava that you, you're thinking, I don't know, thoughts that are really not where they're supposed to be. One thought, hold back. Nelson said, even if you're deep into, uh, you know, licentious, licentious thoughts, Wherever you cut, catch yourself, stop right there. Yeah, look where, 
<laughs> you know, it's preposterous. It doesn't matter. I am preposterous. You are preposterous. That's fine. The only thing that's required from you is a dot better. That is the koyach of Avodis Hashem. The tzaddik already does with it whatever he does. Baruch Hashem, Ezat Hashem, the schus of Reb Nosen should we should guard and guide and guard all of us Ezat Hashem to be you know when you do this when you behave like this you actually you actually uh, um, potentiate put into force the koyach of the tzaddik then he can get you outside out of whatever quagmire you might find yourself in. Like that. It's not your koyach. The only thing that you need is just a little one, one. So, yeah. yeah. I'm the same bum I always was. Why bum? I'm a good person. You know, you know, words and all. A little bit better. A little bit, a tiny bit. No. So, oh. And if you are able to be happy with it, I'm telling you now, you'll end up being such a tzaddik that people will just will blow their minds. Where did this person come from? I used to know him was just like a regular guy. All of a sudden, look at him as a holy guy. What's wrong? What's going on with him? Because he was happy with a single nakuda, a single nakuda, a single machshava, a single pasuk, a single word. Steal away from being the regular Aaron Pinchas or Avrami or whatever, or you know, or whoever, or Hillel or 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 David or whoever. The, just the regular guy, the regular guy that you are. Steal one, become a tiny dash, tiny nakuda better. This is a very the, With this, the tzaddik is a tremendous nachasruach, and you're on the way to the gedusha. Kodesh Baruch would help us. Tonight, through the, the yard site of the Heiliger, Heiliger of Nossen, the Rabbeinu himself said that he was on par with the Balatanya and, and, and all the tzaddikim that knew him, I mean, Reb Nossen, you know, with his great Anova, Kodesh Baruch should help us, we should be Matzliach. First of all, you know, all the dinim will be eradicated. And we shall all be happy with our Yiddishkeit. The way it is. And chop a little bit, steal off a little bit. And Bazat Hashem will be zoichet to be as Mashiach Tzitkenu Bekorah Berinu Mamish. Bazat Hashem, Wednesday, we'll meet again.